Welcome to the Rustic Garden. Today's May 3rd. I'm at my community garden plot and I'm setting up a drip system to take care of these eight containers. These are about five to seven gallon containers that I got from a friend. This is an experiment, so I've just set it up for this year. If it goes well, I'll build up something a little bit nicer for next year. But I wanted to show it to you because this is something that maybe you have experience with, you can help me out, or it's something you can get started with now and just see how it goes. I'm going to let water drip down a hose at about that rate and hopefully what it does is it takes care of the cucumber plants that I believe, melons, uh, maybe a pepper or tomato that I put into these containers. Now the setup, I'm just going to go over real quick. Uh, that is a 27 gallon container filled with water. I had to figure out how to put a spigot on it. You can buy kits I don't want to go with a rain barrel or anything bigger yet until I know that this really works. So again, this is experimental. So I set the containers up right down here. The bottoms were cut out. I cut a circle out about that wide so that the root system can actually grow into the mulch and into the dirt. This is a drip hose. It's recycled rubber and it's round. I originally went with this design, but it dripped water too quickly. I felt like because it's flat, it could get blocked in certain places, so I definitely wanted to go with um, a cylindrical hose that's not going to get pinched off from the weight of the soil. Now, that's a 50, I'm sorry, I think, might have been a 50 foot hose. You don't need all that hose. You can see that I basically start in with a hole right in the side and then just run the hose all the way through. You don't need to do three um, passes through the, the containers. I think one will just work fine, but I didn't want to waste the hose. Didn't want to cut the end out either. And the soil is going to be 50% peat moss or more, 50% topsoil. Fertilize it however you want. You want a lot of organic matter in there, at least 50% because you want it to hold the water. And again, this is going to hold tomatoes, peppers, mostly cucumbers and melons that are going to grow right up on that fence. And the system just gets hooked up just like that and then it will drip down now one thing that was important is this length of hose will drip from everywhere so I bought a container of leak seal and sealed the holes you just spray it on all the way down and then everywhere in between so that the water is only going to leak into the container so what I'm gonna do is set this up I'm gonna set up the drip now show you what it looks like and if it all works we're going to see water sweating out of these tubes. And I'm hoping that at least the first tube sweats out water. All three of them don't have to. And I'll fill it and talk to you about a couple other things. Well, I open the spigot all the way up so the, four, the full force of the water is coming out. And you can see that it's working perfectly fine. And I thought, you know, that that would happen. That's not so much of a shocker. What's going to be interesting is trying to figure out um, how much water should be let out into the hose so that it just brings in enough water to keep it moist steadily over a week's period of time. Um, at this pace, that would just be too much water. I think I'd go through the 24 gallons really, really quickly. But at least it's working. Looks like all three hoses are actually bringing water in. So I'm going to let it drip a little bit. Like here you can tell it's mostly sealed, but there's a couple little leaks. I'm going to try and seal that up a little bit better. Though I do want some water dripping into the mulch because the root systems will grow into that. But so far, so here's so the good. pace of the drip at a slow trickle. I also filled up about half the container with 50% topsoil, 50% peat moss. And you always want to do it in stages. It's easier to mix. You really just want to make sure your soil is just well mixed all the way through, especially if you're putting in fertilizer. But you can see the hose is sweating, so the drip is nice and slow. So I think that this is going to work. Same thing in this container. I just want a little bit of water to continually seep into the containers and I think that this will be effective. And again, this is at a slow trickle. I'm gonna fill up the containers and talk a little bit more about the finished uh, the sort of set up. That's pretty much how they'll look. I am gonna put some composted manure in there because I want to get some good bacteria and soil life into the containers. This is a four containers that aren't mixed in yet, but again, peat moss 50% or any kind of organic matter. If you have compost, that would be great. And then in there is a handful of agricultural lime and also a handful of sort of the organic fertilizer I've been collecting over videos that I did through the winter. Again, when you fertilize, 
always put in less than's recommended. You really don't need as much as we're told that you know need to go in there. A couple of things I already thought of, and again, this is an experiment. So if you've done something like this, any input would be you know greatly appreciated. The hose was sealed, you know, right in the middle. I could have probably sealed one half of the hose that's already in there. I just don't need it dripping that quickly. The other thing that I decided is it's just going to have a drip going into there at about that speed. You don't need a lot of water going through there. You just need water going in regularly. And then one mistake a lot of people make when they use self-contained watering systems or irrigation systems is I don't have to turn this on until later June when the heat really gets here. So these containers will take care of themselves, you know, with the regular watering. Or when I come in, I could just turn this on, um, let some of the water go in and then shut it off. I don't need to let it run the whole time. One of the uh, gardeners here on the community plot also said that that container he thinks was going to heat up to, you know, 100 degrees or more because it's black and because of the July sun here it gets really, really hot. And that does make sense. So I'm going to have to wrap that in some sort of reflector because I don't want hot water going into the root systems of my cucumber plants or whatever I decide to put in there. So I hope this gives you some idea of a, an experiment you can do. Eight containers, it's going to be a lot of plants. It wasn't that costly. I'm not going to get into cost yet because again, this is still an experiment. But what I hope is I learn from this this year and next year I can set up a system that is uh, effective, um, takes care of the plants and doesn't cost a lot of money. Please check out my blog at www.therusticgarden.blogspot.com and also check out my YouTube videos. Thanks.